Hello everyone, back to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the ECMWF 30 day ensemble today's first video in terms of temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies. Uh, we're at the Hungarian Met Office um, for this. We can't show you 500 millibar heights or mean sea level pressure anomalies uh, with these charts, um, but you can get a rough idea for what the model is going to be predicting for the next four weeks from its temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies. The first one we've done for uh, three weeks because it's had a little break for uh, Christmas and New Year, which uh, both uh, coincided with Tuesday, which is the day we do the E70F 30-day uh, lookhead, of course. Um, so uh, I haven't looked at these a little while, and they are quite interesting charts, I have to say. So I'll talk you through uh, the temperature and precipitation anomalies for the next four weeks very shortly. Just to say that today's second video update will be coming up on the homepage later on this afternoon, and that's going to be your regular week to 10 day video update, so uh, there'll be all the information included uh, in that one that you uh, expect with the week to 10 day video update. Uh, so we're going to start off with the temperature anomaly for uh, week one, for our forecast period, it's actually week two for the year. Uh, so this is how the ECDF is forecasting things to uh, be looking with uh, temperature anomalies across Europe uh, in the coming weeks. So this is going from the 7th through to the 13th of um, January. So it looks pretty mild in the week ahead in the northwest of Europe, much of Scandinavia is coming out uh, milder than average. The UK, Ireland coming out uh, above average as well. Northern parts of Germany down to the low countries, um, milder than average week ahead there. So the mild temperature is really in the north, far north and northeast of Europe. And actually these many other parts of Europe looking really quite uh, cold. So we've got much of France coming out cooler than average. Spain, Portugal also having below average temperatures. Most of the Mediterranean slightly below average too. And then as we go to the eastern part of the bed, it actually gets colder. So significantly cold on average for Italy. Uh, significantly cold on average over the Adriatic into the um, Balkans. And then down into uh, the southeastern part of the med. So Greece, yes, it uh, looks pretty cold up there. Going northwards towards the Black Sea and then up to the east of Europe, Ukraine, and then back to Russia. Many of those areas forecast to be colder than average. So it really is in the south and the east of Europe and the southeast of Europe that those temperature anomalies are below average with the milder conditions in the north and west of Europe in the week ahead. Uh, precipitation anomalies are looking like this, so uh, very dry in the west, uh, much of uh, the UK, Ireland, France, Spain, Portugal, much drier than average, <coughs> excuse me, across the western part of Europe. Southern parts of Norway and down to Denmark were a little bit milder than average there, but going northwards, uh, it looks a bit more unsettled for northern parts of uh, Norway and also around the Baltic Sea. Uh, it's a little bit drier than average down there. So a bit of a mix of precipitation anomalies across Scandinavia. Moving southwards in towards Germany and Poland. Uh, above average precipitation there looks quite unsettled. Then down in the central base of the Mediterranean, a lot of dry weather through the holiday islands and over towards Italy. Uh, dry than average there. But in the southeast of Europe, especially around Greece, it does look very unsettled there. Heavy rain and uh, thunderstorms, possibly even some snow, I would have thought, in some parts of northern Greece uh, anyway. And then these eastern parts of Europe are very close to average with the uh, precipitation anomalies there. It does also have got a big ridge of high pressure sitting just to the west of Europe, somewhere around here. And that's why many of these western parts are uh, pretty dry in the week ahead. And we go through to week two temperature anomalies. This is taking us from the 14th through to the 20th of uh, January. And uh, big changes coming up then. So much of Scandinavia and northeastern Europe going significantly colder than average, much colder than average from Scandinavia over the Baltic Sea in towards uh, the west of Russia. Temperatures there are between around 3 and 6 degrees uh, below average. Still looks pretty mild across the central parts of Europe, though. So uh, Germany, for example, coming out milder than average. Much of the low countries, Belgium and Holland, milder than average down there. For the UK and Ireland, we're very close to average. Perhaps still a little bit on the milder than average side, to be honest. But it is cooler than it is 
than what we see in um, week one. That leaves much of Southern Europe still looking pretty cool, really. Spain, Portugal coming out cooler than average there. Most of the Mediterranean looks uh, generally a little bit on the cool side. Not as cold across Italy, but probably still a little bit. Uh, it's probably still a little bit cooler than average there. And then down in Southeast Europe, probably not quite as cold for uh, places like Greece and Turkey. But nevertheless, still a little bit on the colder than average side uh, for that middle period of January. Precipitation anomaly is looking like this, so uh, it's going much drier than average across Scandinavia. So it looks like high pressure might be getting going across Scandinavia. It still looks drier than average for the UK and Ireland overall, but not as dry as it is uh, in week one. So possibly things are turning a little bit more unsettled through uh, the northwest of Europe around the UK and Ireland. These central parts of Europe a little bit wetter than average. So um, the low countries into Germany, into Poland, a little bit above average with precipitation. Uh, and then going further south, much of the Mediterranean is looking dry. France is around average with precipitation uh, through there. And then that takes us to week three and a real change. Look at that. This is going from the 21st through to the 27th of January. And it's turning much colder across many parts of Europe. So the mile and average temperature anomalies are pushed away to the very far southeast of Europe, around the Black Sea, up towards southern parts of uh, Russia. And then going down in towards Greece, it's a little bit milder than average there. But that's the exception to the rule. Most parts of Europe are being plunged into cold or possibly even very cold uh, conditions. And the coldest temperature anomalies are in the north. So um, let's just Scandinavia here. It's forecast to be between 3 and 6 degrees below average. For UK and Ireland, much colder than average now, uh, between 1 and 3 degrees below average. Most of France going colder than average. Germany, colder than average. Uh, down to Spain and Portugal, it's a little bit colder than average there. But it looks like the coldest temperature anomalies are in the northwest and the north of Europe, actually. And the mildest temperature anomalies are in the southeast. So the northwest is going cold, and the southeast of Europe is going, <coughs> excuse me, again, a lot milder as we go from the 21st through to the 27th of January. Precipitation anomalies show why that's happening. So it's much drier than average across uh, Norway. It's much drier than average across Iceland. Most of the uh, northern Atlantic is looking drier than average. So this is a blocking signal. The ECMWF is going for high pressure to be building to the north through the northern latitudes. And so that, of course, will be pushing cold air from the north and from the east out of the Arctic or Siberia or both. And uh, that's flooding across Europe. And so that's the reason it turns much colder through this, uh, through this period from the 21st to the 27th of January. Further south, it looks quite unsettled across Europe. So many of these southern parts of Europe are coming out with above average precipitation. A little bit wet and average for Spain and Portugal. A little bit wet and average through the Med, a little bit wet and average around Italy. Those areas are looking above average with rainfall, so it appears we may be starting to set up a subly tracking jet stream as the blocking high pressure forms up here. You're going to force a jet stream southwards into the Mediterranean. So it turns more unsettled in southern Europe and it turns colder and drier across the northern parts of Europe. And then we're through to week four, and this one takes us from the 28th of January through to the 3rd of February. And Europe is still well and truly locked into the freezer here. So again, we've got most of Scandinavia, most of Northern Europe, significantly colder than average. Three to six degrees below average in Northern Europe in the middle of winter is going to be very, very cold. Uh, indeed, bitterly cold for much of Northern Europe. Elsewhere across Europe, it is a cold scene. So most parts of um, Europe, like we've got the UK, Ireland, France, Low Countries, Germany, those areas are still around one to three degrees below average. So it is a significantly colder than average end to January, start to February. The only places that are milder than average are in this very extreme southeastern corner of uh, of Europe, so around the Black Sea, 
going out to Turkey, over to Greece, those areas are still uh, above average with temperatures, quite significantly so, actually, around, uh, I think the temperature normally there is around 1 to 3 degrees above average, 1 or 2 uh, limited areas, 3 to 6 degrees above average, so very mild in the southeast Europe, but most pla most parts of Europe, and particularly the north and the northwest of Europe, are well and truly locked into the freezer there through uh, that to end of January, start of February, week 4 period. And again, you see the reason why with the precipitation anomalies. So much of Scandinavia is drier than average. Northern parts of the Atlantic still drier than average. So we've still got blocking uh, close to Scandinavia, close to Iceland, close to Greenland. Lots of high pressure up there. Uh, southern parts of Europe, again, looking more unsettled. So presumably the jet stream is down here, going from the Atlantic into the Med, taking uh, low pressure spells of rain through the Mediterranean as the blocking high pressure forces uh, the low pressure of the jet stream south. So much of southern Europe, the Mediterranean, above average precipitation anomalies from the 28th of January to 3rd of February, but it's drier than average up across the north. So the UK, you'll notice quite interestingly that these eastern coastal areas, eastern parts of England and Scotland, have above average precipitation, whilst it's drier than average, out to the northwest. This is very indicative of an easterly wind. So we end January, start February with proper bitterly cold easterly winds. And what that's picking up on is convective snow showers, or maybe even areas of low pressure forming in the North Sea, producing longer spells of snow potentially uh, down the eastern side of the country, whilst western Scotland, Ireland, southwestern parts of Scotland, those areas are drier than average as they're sheltered by those easterly winds. So, uh, reading between the lines, I think week three is probably dominated by northerlies, a northerly flow, and then by turning it through to week four, 28th of January to 3rd of February, we probably set up high pressure more towards Scandinavia and bring in those bitterly cold easterly winds. But either way, weeks three and weeks four looking very cold here uh, with this 30-day update from the ECM WF. So uh, it's long range stuff. It's not to be relied upon. Please don't get too excited about those uh, temperature and precipitation anomaly charts. If you're waiting for cold weather, you had a long wait this winter in the UK. It's been very little cold weather at all. But uh, things are changing big time if this is right. And of course, that if is the most important word out of all of this, because there's no guarantee that this is going to be correct. We're just going to have to take it day by day and uh, see what's, uh, what develops. This almost certainly is being caused by the ECMDF 30-day ensembles picking up on impacts from the sudden stratospheric warming that I've been talking about recently in the videos. So it would be in line with what you would expect after a major warming of the stratosphere over the North Pole. But uh, until we start seeing this coming into the shorter range time frame, and the change is really beginning week two, actually. It's week two that starts to show the change. So that's like next week. Um, and so you would expect the model output, short range model output, short range ECM, GFS, those models, you'd expect them to start picking up on this very shortly. Not necessarily that bitterly cold end to January, but certainly the bigger changes within the atmosphere. Uh, you would expect them, because it looks like that starts next week, you expect these short range models to very soon now start picking up on this if uh, the ECMDF ensembles are correct. Big if. So, all looking very interesting, and uh, obviously we'll be keeping you, keeping you updated, monitoring this day by day, starting with today's second video update, and that'll be with you this afternoon. So come back for that on the homepage. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.